Speak handsome and pretty, are you all right? Today we will talk about the Hadean period and its importance for the formation of our solar system and planet Earth. If you enjoy history content, leave a like, subscribe and activate the bell so you don't miss any videos and let's grow this community of history lovers. If you want to delve even further into the study of the Hadean period I am leaving in the pinned comment some links to books on this subject. So enough rambling and let's talk about what matters. The Hadean period is named after the Greek god Hades and means hell, which is basically what the earth was like in that period with thousands of active volcanoes and bombing meteors. Scientists have not reached a consensus on the start date of this period, so I will consider the Big Bang which was the great explosion that formed the universe. The formation of the solar system took place in the Hadean period and the most accepted theory at the moment is that a large amount of cosmic dust formed the original solar nebula, which underwent a large gravitational event and began to condense at its center large amounts of hydrogen and helium, thus forming the proto-sun, which would later become our sun so well known, which makes us feel hot or get that 10. The rest of this nebula was condensing into protoplanets that hit each other and absorbed material and with that they were getting bigger and bigger and gaining gravitational fields that helped to pull even more material causing them to have an unbridled growth, at a certain moment the protoplanet Earth was hit by another protoplanet the size of Mars and thus generated the Moon, this theory is called Big Splash. The proto-Venus was also hit by another proto-planet that ended up leaving it with the reversed rotation so strong was the blow, Uranus also has its reversed rotation. Over the millions of years the proto-planet Earth had its formation a little more organized with materials such as iron and nickel sinking towards the core and lighter silicate materials forming a mantle on top, these silicates were cooling and solidifying forming what today we call it the silicate mantle. The other protoplanets did not stand still and were adding more and more gases from the nebula and becoming the famous gas giants such as Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune, they became so large and their gravitational field so intense that they caused several other protoplanets to become their natural moons like the great Titan of Saturn and the rest of these small protoplanets that remained formed what is now the asteroid belt between Mars and Jupiter. The land after the formation of the silicate mantle still suffered from a lot of volcanic activity and meteoric bombardment due to the lack of a protective atmosphere, but with intense volcanism large releases of gases such as carbon gas, carbon monoxide, sulfur dioxide, chloride of hydrogen, nitrogen, and hydrogen happen and thus a thin atmosphere begins to appear that manages to reduce the bombardment of meteors. The most accepted theory for how the planet Earth received water is that comets brought the necessary elements for the formation of water and it was evaporating and raining on the Earth, which accelerated the process of cooling the Earth and generated lakes, seas, and oceans. Now with the Earth with its colder surface and with liquid water, it would have conditions for the emergence of the first biochemical interactions, and thus the emergence of the first living beings on its surface. And with that we finish this video, I hope from the bottom of my heart that you enjoyed it, stay with God and until the next video.